Of all figures associated with the Utah War, I can find none more interesting than Major Lot Smith, and the Brigham Young realized Washington, D.C. had declared the LDS Church in a state of open rebellion, the strategy they devised was to move up Echo Canyon and meet Johnston's army, laying siege to them in a very specific way. Specifically, they were to burn all the grass, destroy the supplies, and shoot into the air when they were asleep. And at South Pass, Wyoming, they managed to burn three supply chains of Johnston's army before Johnston could enter the canyon and make his way to Salt Lake. Now, Salt Lake at this time had already heard the rumors that Johnston was rapidly anti-Mormon. Although the government didn't want this, Johnston wanted to kill every Mormon he saw. And Lot Smith was able to successfully force his men to retreat back to Fort Bridger because the winter was setting in early and all of their supplies had dwindled because his battalion was destroying them. However, when they arrived there, they found Fort Bridger to be entirely burnt down. So they had to sleep in these very ramshackle tents that they had set up off of Fort Bridger. And by the time they could actually make it down into Utah, the government had sent in a negotiator and the war was solved more or less peacefully. But Lot Smith's entire story is fascinating. He was elected to local office. He was uh, charged for polygamy, but because he respected the law, he was able to get off of these charges. And he was the youngest person to hike with the Mormon battalion all the way to California for the Mexican War. And during the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln personally chose him to guard telegraph lines in Utah. He's a fascinating, fascinating person. Johnston's army was pulled out of Camp Floyd in 61 at the start of the Civil War, left the Central Overland Trail unguarded. So they conscripted uh, 300 Mormon volunteers under the command of Lot Smith to guard the Overland Trail, and they did an excellent job. But the Eastern powers didn't trust Mormons. So when they formed a detachment of California volunteers under he started out as Major Patrick Edward Connor. By the time he got here, they made him Colonel of California Volunteers, came into Utah to guard the Overland Trail. Their initial orders were to occupy Camp Floyd. Well, they got there and there's nothing there and it's 200 or it's 100, it's 40 miles from the Mormon capital. And he says, I can't guard him from here. So he went and occupied the heights above Salt Lake and he named it Camp Douglas after Stephen A. Douglas, senator from Illinois, that he knew the Mormons detested. And he endeavored to start trouble with the Mormons. He didn't like Mormons. And Abraham Lincoln sent a letter to him, handwritten, I'm told, that he would fight one war at a time, and if his officers couldn't follow orders, he'd find new officers. A little while earlier, I said that Lot Smith was characteristically non-violent in the Utah War and that he liked to resolve conflicts peacefully. Now, this is true for his service in the Utah War, but I should point out that he took part in the massacre of Fort Utah in 1850. And I think that this is something which guided him towards a non-violent warfare later on in the Utah War. The massacre was caused because of great influx of Mormon pioneers to the Great Basin. And initially, the Timpanogos tribe who lived here agreed to accept them. But cholera epidemics and mass starvation caused a great deal of tension. And eventually, after a couple of deaths, Brigham Young ordered the extermination of every Indian who was of the Timpanogos tribe. And he said that if you were a man of fighting age, you would be killed. And if you were a woman or a child, you would be allowed to live if you, quote, behaved yourself. So Lot Smith, believing that a Indian uprising is imminent, he decides to join the Mormon battalion, the Mormon volunteers. And when the Mormon militia marches in, they go up the valley and find a log cabin, which the Timpanogos are hiding out in because they know what is coming. And they lay siege to it, and by morning, over a dozen people are dead. And the ones who escaped managed to go up the valley. Lot Smith, and I believe Oren Porter Rockwell and Wild Bill Hickok, or Hickman, they go up the valley, and they massacre about 100 people and take 40 of them and sell them as slaves further south. The heads they chop off and they send to the Smithsonian, but they're lost along the way, and their elderly chief is beheaded. And the Timpanogos War was marked by a genuine ethnic cleansing. Now, I believe that this brutal massacre 
saw a great impact on his further warfare decision-making skills. I believe that he saw the brutality here and he became jaded at the idea of massacring people that he didn't like. A lot of people who were involved in the Utah War could remember very clearly the violent incidents they had with the U.S. or at least with American government in the past. And this is one of the examples of this. John Walker survived the Hans Mill Massacre. And when the governor of Missouri ordered the Mormons to leave, it was a do or die order. But Hans Mill, a small settlement in Missouri, didn't accept this. And the Missouri militia moved in and began systematically killing every man, woman, and even the very young children and, and infants. And uh, they were thrown after they were raped and tortured into a well. And all that remains of Hans Mill is this well and millstone today.